Yeah, go ahead. Could you waive uh, the rights uh, after it's uh, it's done? In other words, like this gentleman said, uh -huh. you, you've done your six months and so forth. Then could you could do a post uh, yeah. conviction or conviction or you know waiver? Yeah, I wouldn't waive any rights. I would waive benefits. Don't waive the benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then seek remedy. Sure. Okay. You know, it's not. No court case is over until they give me my check. Until I get a check, the case ain't over. It's my money. All the money they're making off those prisoner bonds is mine, not theirs. All I gotta do is go and reclaim it. Okay. What else? Anybody else? Somebody? Oh, okay. Back over here. Uh huh. All right. When you're, when you're waiving, let us say, the trip to the jail and so forth, uh -huh. well, they don't call them jails or prisons anymore. They call them correctional institutions. Sure. So that's what you're really waiving, mm -hmm. the, the, the opportunity to be corrected. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, somebody else here had your hand up over some of the side? Okay, here's one coming up here. We need to get you some roller skates. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen this work? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. I thought it was hypothetical. No, not waiver. Okay. Not waiver. Uh, they, they will try to get you to waive your rights. Uh, for instance, I was, in a, I was in a traffic court and the judge said, uh, Do you understand your rights? And I said, like what? He said, well, you have the right to reign silent, you have the right to an attorney, you have the right to blah, blah, blah. I said, are those my rights? He said, yeah. I said, I don't waive none of that. He said, are you one of those constitutionalists? I said, do I have constitutional rights? He said, yeah. I said, I don't waive those either. <laughs> <laughs> But he was trying to get me to waive. See, when they say, do you understand your rights, they're trying to get you to waive your rights, not trying to secure them to yourself. To understand means what? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to are you going to be the surety? Are you going to ensure your rights? And so he said, Well, I'm not going to waive any of that. Why should I waive that? It belongs to me. See? And so it can go either way. Either you can you you can either refuse to waive your rights or you can in fact go waive a benefit privilege because the benefit privilege cannot be forced on you if it's forced on you it's not a benefit privilege it's involuntary servitude and peonage we had some people in here who had a great deal of success with that I mean no people uh, raise your hand who it was there you go right here you've been using involuntary servitude and peonage to beat them because they can't force you to accept the benefit privilege. Okay? Somebody else? Okay, here come, here come two, hey, we got a new guy coming up here. Uh oh, look out. of smart pills and send them in to the jail and tell that guy take some smart pills and then, then we're going to talk about how you're going to solve that problem. What he needs to do, he needs to go apologize to the court. Because the, see, what he did not do is he did not waive the right of citizenship so the court rightfully presumed that he was a citizen and a citizen has a duty to inform upon themselves. If you are a citizen, you cannot refuse to identify yourself. So he's in contempt. The only way he can do that is purge the contempt. He has to apologize to the court in order to do that. So that's how I would recommend do it. See? You have to overcome the presumptions, folks, because here's the first rule. <clears throat> no reasonable man would reject a benefit if it was offered to him. And so 
if in fact you walk into the court, they presume, and rightfully so, that you have accepted and are using the benefit privileges. You have to tell them otherwise. And so if you walk in down there at the courthouse, and you do not specifically, expressly waive the benefit privilege, it is presumed that you are accepting and using it. And if you are a citizen, under law, merchant law, you are required, because you've agreed to, you are required to inform on yourself. Okay. And that really is my point. When the judge or anyone in any situation tries to get you to do something, we've been so educated to accept, whether we understand or not, we need to start being like the blue child and say, are you asking me to volunteer to do this or that or something else? Is the judge asking me to waive my rights when he asks if I understand? That's right. And when it throws it back at him in that direction, all of a sudden he knows he's talking to somebody that's of a different caliber. That's correct. They will test and try you to see what you know. And, and uh, for instance, I watched uh, a video of a fellow one time, I knew the guy, and it's, it's when all this uh, commercial redemption stuff had come out, and it was, uh, he, he was trying to do an acceptance for value in the court. And he was doing very poorly. And the judge was trying to help him. And he literally was trying to help him. So, well, do you mean to say such and such? No, I mean, the, the, how about, the judge was trying to help him do the acceptance. And, and the guy did not know how to properly do that thing. And so finally the judge got tired and said, okay, that's enough of that. Bang, you know. And so uh, you will be tested and tried on your knowledge. So when you go down there, make sure you got it straight, okay? Uh, state your name and address for the record. You're trying to get me to? Oh, okay. Uh, well, may I have your name, please? <laughs> what? <laughs> you won't do that to a judge. Yeah, I did. I do it to judges. Why? <laughs> and, and so, okay, okay. Uh, then what did he say? He wouldn't give it to me. Oh, he wouldn't. So I'd give him mine. So then, how did he? Then, then how did he go on from there? Then how did he go from there? Well, let me tell you a funny story. <laughs> no, is this it? <laughs> it may be a funny story. I don't know. Well, yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it worked out. Uh, I, I wasn't on trial. One of my kids had got jammed up for some stupid thing. I got mad about it because he didn't do what they said he did. So I went down to the courthouse and I would, you know, do my usual. Let's go be nice to the folks down there. And so, uh, <clears throat> so I was trying to uh, coach the kid from on the other side of the bar. Well, the judge he got kind of got tired of it because I was telling the kid, "Don't take an attorney. Don't take an attorney." And so uh, finally, uh, judge judge got tired of me talking to the kid. He said, "Who are you?" And so I said, well, who are you? See, he wouldn't give me his name, so I wouldn't give him mine either. So then I said, can I speak in this matter as a non-party? <laughs> Why he did, I don't know. He said, yes. I said, can I come inside the bar? He said, no, stay out there. See, so me and him had a conversation back and forth, and he never got my name, and I never got his. Because anytime you give your name, you are contracting with them. So I, I don't give my name unless I get into a spot like somebody has mentioned it over here that I might do it in that particular case. But when somebody has asked me, you know, what's your name, I'll say, well, what's your name? But this, that, that process, that would go, that could go on for hours. Well, sure. Or they're going to throw you in jail. No, no. Well. Not as long as you're asking questions. You can't be held in contempt if you're asking questions. Well, that's going to take a lot of practice. That might take a bit of practice. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to give my name if they'll give me theirs. Because I'm going to do the same thing to their name they're fixing to do to mine. And if, they, if they do something mean to my, to my name, to my title, I'm going to do it ten times worse to them. <laughs>